It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing a double feature Blu-ray uh, released by Scream Factory. Uh, I believe in it. Uh, in 2012 and the two films appropriately on the back here are uh, called Two Tales of Television Tear. The first film being Tear Vision and the other the other film, The Video Dead. Uh, both are you know thematically about televisions kind of haunting people or killing people and or ruining their day in some way. Uh, the first film that I watched uh, was Tear Vision. And let me just say that both these films, uh, especially Terror Vision, are like quintessential, you know, 80s trash cinema. Uh, they're fun, but boy, you know, they're, they're pretty fucking bad. <laughs> um, but anyway, the first film, Terror Vision, uh, that was directed by, uh, oh, where's his name? Uh, no. Uh, Ted Niccolo, who uh, got his start being the sound man on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, he later then um, worked with Charles Band. Uh, the, you know, this film was done, released by M uh, Empire International Pictures. Uh, Charles Band ended up uh, forming Full Moon Pictures in 1989. Uh, they released, uh, you know, stuff like Puppet Master, all the Puppet Master films and, um, you know, just a lot of goofy, weird, wacky kind of movies. Uh, probably the best one, I think, is uh, Stuart Gordon's Castle Freak. Love that film. Uh, but Terror Vision is, you know, to me, the most hyper-realistic, almost surrealistic... Well, it is surrealist. Surreal. Yeah, it is quite surreal. Um, kind of... You know, 80s film, uh, you know, I won't go too in de detail because they're kind of hard to, they, these movies are hard to review. <laughs> uh, but Terror Vision is about like this family that gets a satellite. I mean, you know, this is 86, so satellites were a big deal then. But they get this satellite, the father's working on it, he can't get good reception, and for some reason they have the satellite repairman there and he's there all the time and he's drinking beer uh, just real peculiar stuff in this film so a beam from outer space that looks like lightning kind of inexplicably inexplicably just shoots this satellite beam and all of a sudden you know or satellite dish and all of a sudden they have great reception everyone gets over it uh, there's a father a mother uh, the son uh, this the older sister um, who's the daughter obviously and uh, their grandfather who comes over who's invited over to watch the new satellite TV and then uh, the daughter's boyfriend o o OD who is this like 80s metalhead idiot with with a leather jacket and uh, obviously fake wig and He's got the studded bracelets, and he says, dude, a lot. He has a wasp shirt, you know, just 80s to the max and beyond. Um, so this movie's very strange. <laughs> like, you know, it just un, 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 undescribably just, like, crazy. Uh, the acting is pretty damn atrocious in this. <laughs> like, the dialogue it's alone is just, like, bury your head under a pillow and start punching yourself because you're like, what in the fuck? You know, um... But then on top of that, what I found just really strange um, is that the parents are swingers and they're like openly swingers and it's just like something mom and dad does and it's like, oh, okay, you know, that's weird. Not that I'm against that or anything or I'm offended by it, but it just adds to the level of weird, crazy shit in this film. Um, so this, the parents go out to swing, you know, and uh, the grandfather and the son, they're watching the new TV, you know, uh, and the next thing you know, they find this monster movie, this weird 
monster with like I don't even know how to explain it uh, but it ends up coming out of the TV the grand there they wake up the the kid and the uh, the grandfather who fell asleep watching the TV the monster show and the next thing you know this monster uh, is out in real life and it eats the grandfather and the kids freaking out he calls the police the police don't believe him and so he calls this TV show that's on uh, that's kind of like an Elvira horror host uh, and, and but it's Medusa it's this, she's got you know the snake head and everything and she's real sexualized and weird uh, but you know so she don't believe him in everything she tr he tries telling his sister and the boyfriend they don't believe him you know nobody believes the kid the monsters going around like destroying shit eating people eating things um, you know and uh, then the sister and the brother end up you know finding out that this is real uh, meanwhile you know, all these things are happening that are so crazy. It, they end up eating the parents. The parents come home with another couple and they're gonna like whatever, do their thing. The mother gets angry at the child. She locks him in the grandfather's bedroom, which is like a bunker full of weapons. And you know, he's like all this stuff for when the world's gonna end, you know, kind of like a doomsday prepper kind of guy. And that's weird too. That, that's another strange thing. like. The the grandfather is this crazy conspiracy-minded wacko kind of ex-military guy, and he runs around with the grandson, and they just like have you know pistols and and you know full automatic guns shooting and playing around like it's nothing big, no one cares, <laughs> you know. So anyway, there's that, and then you know the uh, this monster just ends up eating the, the, the parents who are like in this crazy room with a jacuzzi and a pool and they're gonna do their thing and the next thing you know you know the monster eats all of them and can kinda like use them when need be like he can use their likeness or like he can kinda transform into them in a way it yeah and so they don't even really know that the parents are gone, but then they do find out. And the next thing you know, the sister and the boyfriend, they end up believing the kid, and then they try to do all these things to kill him, and, and, and they're freaked out. But then, then there's like this moment where they even mention this, you know, they can get them to talk, and they can like tame the monster, and they, they talk about E.T. They say that in the movie, it's like E.T., and they, Get him to sort of talk, but then this whole other time there is this kind of alien looking guy that I don't know, he's like in a space suit, I guess, like kind of like an astronaut suit. And he's this alien on TV and he keeps talking about how everyone needs to turn their television off. And for 200 years, and he's going on and on, and that's throughout the thing. Uh, they get a hold of Medusa to come over because they're trying to get rich now off the alien next thing you know the alien monster whatever um from the television the the the, the alien guy the war that's warning everyone he transforms himself into the the house that they're living in the real world i guess and um and then medusa shows up and kills him by busting open the, the spaceman's helmet and the monster gets out of control and eats everyone and actually at the end of the movie possesses or, or not possesses but absorbs or whatever you want to call it Medusa because she's got like a claw and I don't know I, it's really difficult to explain this movie it, I, I'm trying but uh God, it's bizarre. Uh, th I think this was one of the first big movies that John Carl Buechler did the special effects for. And the special effects are pretty good. Um, I mean, I've seen way better. You can see the budget's not necessarily uh, big on this, much like any of the Charles Band produced films. But, uh, you know, it's, 
it's definitely worth a watch. It, it's just a wild thing. I highly re recommend maybe being a little intoxicated for it um, and just having a good time and laughing at how absurd it is. But it, uh, you know, it, it's a strange, strange movie that barely kind of makes sense. And, you know, the, the, it's just one of those things where you wonder why the characters are like that and why they would make any of these choices and, and, and it, you know it doesn't feel realistic in any way it just feels like some weird bad nightmare that doesn't quite make sense and is a, quite laughable when you think about it so that's TerraVision insane the next film I actually liked a little better and thought um, you know, it was just more to my thing, and I think it was a little bit more interesting as a as a story. Uh, Terror Vision to me kind of felt like some kind of weird Goosebumps episode or something, to where uh, the Video Dead seemed like a legitimate, you know, independent film here. Um, you know, it's still pretty laughable at some some parts. The acting's still pretty bad, and some of the dialogue is atrocious, but. Um, the Video Dead was uh, directed, well, I'll get into that, directed by Robert Scott, uh, who hasn't done a lot since this. He, he does, uh, he's worked as a second unit director, first assistant director in a lot of other movies, so I don't know if he's still in the Hollywood world or what. There's not a lot of information about him, but it seems like he put a lot of heart and soul into doing this. And I watched the making of it, and it seemed like you know, he spent a lot of time trying to get this thing made and done. So, you know, and I, I, this this film had a lot of charm to it for what it was, um, you know. But basically with this story, you know, it's, it's like, it starts out with this writer and a guy delivers, or it's a couple guys, they deliver a television like really early in the morning and he's like, well, I didn't order nothing and... Well, whatever, it's a free TV. So he apparently doesn't have a TV. He's a writer, you know. It's It shows him writing on his typewriter. The The TV's on. He goes in there. It's some zombie movie. He's kind of like, this is, you know, disgusting or something. And unplugs the TV. Well, it keeps turning on. And he's like, what the hell, you know. So eventually the zombies come out of the TV. Uh, why exactly and how that works? I don't know. I think it's a cursed TV. So this TV, you know, makes the zombies come in, and the next thing you know, uh, a couple days later, these other people, I can't remember who it is, but they open it the front door, I think to deliver something else, and he's, this writer's dead. Cuts to a new family. It's a brother and sister, and, um, well, no, it's a sister at first, and then the younger brother sort of shows up like, I'm here too, to help mom and dad. Their parents are in Saudi Arabia. They don't really explain why, but they're out of the country. And the kids are there getting the house ready and doing things like that. Uh, so this one guy uh, from Texas, I guess, they make it clear he's from Texas. He's got a cowboy hat on, all that good stuff. And he's trying to be like, was there a television delivered to you and all this stuff? And, he, you know, he's the kind of red herring warning going on. And the kid's like, you know, buzz off. You're nothing, you know, don't worry about it. Well, like immediately after the kid finds this old black and white TV, the one that we saw before in the attic. And, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> he uh, ends up taking it like in his room and he meets this girl in the neighborhood and she's walking a dog and everything and and then they they find out that there's a zombie lurking in the the woods and it's it, it gets a little disjointed with like what like there's this really weird part where this other girl has this dog and they, the dog runs off and, and then you see a zombie in the woods and it seems like, okay, it's implied that the zombie's gonna eat the dog. Well, then they, the, she freaks out, where's the dog? Uh, dog's name is Chocolate. They go off into the woods and they find the dog and they're like, oh, I had a heart attack. 
So the zombie didn't eat the dog. It had a heart attack. Very strange. Um, so, so then, I don't know. All, it, they, they do an okay job of, I guess, introducing all these characters. Like I said, some of the, the stuff that happens and the kind of dialogue. Like, the, the, the problem with this movie big time is there's just certain moments where, like, certain things happen that are shocking and the characters don't even seem to, like, care. Because the, the weird thing, too, is, like, they're in this... He's got the TV in his room now, this, the younger kid, and he's he's smoking a joint and everything, so he thinks he's high, and he sees this beautiful woman on TV, and she's, like, talking to him. And she appears in the room with him and everything, and I think they make out, and she's being all, you know, sexual and everything. And then she's back on the TV, and there's this random part where... Some, like, fat guy comes up and slits her throat. And he's, you know, his reaction is like, why'd you kill her? Well, like, like, what? Like, the, the, the reaction of these characters is just not, it doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense why they don't react in bigger ways um, to something crazy like that. And uh, the next thing you know... There's zombies roaming around this neighborhood, and they go through and kind of kill all these different um, neighbors and stuff in, in different ways. The zombies in this are a lot more careful about how they do things, I guess. You know, and they're not like, there's no explanation why they're zombies. It's like they're from a movie on TV, I think. And it's, it, you know... It, it doesn't make sense, but what I well, the good thing about this film is that some of the visuals were really cool. Like the, there's the infamous like right on the cover right here is kind of a depiction of like one of the coolest scenes when you see the the, the television like smoking and and this zombie just rises from the the TV you know and and there's all this smoke and everything and it, it's very atmospheric. Um, there's some cool like blood in this. Um, if you're into like cheesy kind of zombie movies and like '80s kind of gore flicks, like this is this is something to check out for sure. Um, you know, like I said, these movies are fun. Um, by no means are they masterpieces. Like it's actually some of the weirdest stuff I've ever seen. Um, but I would say you know the video dead. It's definitely like a good, solid kind of like little splatter flick, zombie flick. Um, there's weird, another thing too, there's another weird part where everybody like dies except a sister and she just casually has to go about this way of dealing with the zombies to, <laughs> she's like serving them dinner and trying to make conversation with them. Because the, the, the man from Texas, I forget his name, that character that's trying to warn them, they end up letting back in the house, and he's like, you can't show them fear. So her version of that is to, you know, show them a good time. But it is a way she traps them in this basement, because he also talks about how they don't like mirrors, because when they see that they're dead, they, like, lose power. So there's that. Like I said, it, it really, a lot of it just don't make sense. But um, it's an enjoyable time. Uh, so, you know, check these out. Double feature, uh, two tales of television tear. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching my video. Would really, really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to my channel. Uh, give, give my videos a like, check things out. Um, I hope you have a great day. See you.